Y'all hear that out there, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Business Society Game. Yes, I'm your host, Baron Davis. So fresh and so clean today on a Monday, having big combos. Uh, this site, the game, is a platform where we highlight dope entrepreneurs, athletes, people in business that are, you know, basically, you know, putting the laying the right foundation and inspiring our youth and inspiring our culture and really just focusing in on the next generation and who and what um, they're building. And so for me, um, I get the pleasure on this Monday of introducing my brothers, <laughs> uh, Jordan, Jake, and Jim, um, the Super Coffee Brothers, I call them. Uh, they appeared on Shark Tank with a product. Um, I'm not going to give the backstory because I, I, I want you guys to give that. But they are young entrepreneurs who came up with an idea of brothers who come from the athletic world and, you know, thinking about ways to change the athletic experience, you know, as well as the consumer experience. And basically, as athletes, right, I think, where this conversation is going to go is more about, you know, inspiration and falling on your face, getting knocked down, things like that. And you would think, um, you know, it's always like what happens after Shark Tank, you know what I mean? And I think that these young men have, you know, really just aligned themselves with the right energy, the right operations, the right, you know, the right team and become, you know, uh, this next generation of, you know, entrepreneurs and leaders and being able to take their brand to ultimate heights, to take their company and, you know, create innovation that is one, not only like changing the way uh, we affect and consume, you know, uh, in our lives, but also, you know, developing a brand uh, that appeals, you know, to mental wellness, uh, active wellness, right? and and really being able to, you know, appeal to this next generation and be the leaders of that. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, give it up. All right. Jordan, Jay. Well said. Yeah. What up? Yeah. Yeah. For coffee, bro. <laughs> thank you, bro. Thanks for having us, bro. Yes. Thank yeah, you so sorry much. we don't have, like, no banner tags. So, I, you know, I, Jordan, Jake, Jim. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, next time we'll get some like cue cards or something like that. <laughs> so, man, thank you for coming on uh, on convos, big convos. Uh, let's get right into it. Like, one, uh, how was life growing up? You know what I mean? And like, where, 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 like, talk about like just growing up in the house. Where do you guys get? you know, your competitive drive, where do you get your talents, you know what I mean? How was life like uh, in your house growing up as brothers? Yeah, man, so it's always been competitive. We're, uh, I think that starts, we're super close in age. You know, I'm 27, Jake's 26, Gordon's 24, about to be 25. So we're, uh, we're super close and, and growing up, we all played on the same sports teams. You know, we were in the same leagues just because the ages were so close. Uh, and our, both of our parents, our mom and dad, were athletes too. So sports was always a part of, of who we were. And when we were kids, our mom worked at the YMCA. She, uh, she taught classes at the Y. So for 10 years, probably from the time I was, I was like four or five until I was the time I was 15, our mom worked at the Y. So we spent all of our time at the Y, lifting weights, playing basketball, playing tag, swimming in the pool. Uh, and, and sports was everything for us, man. Like it was our identity. Um, and, and, I think we pushed each other to be better. You know, the, the nice thing about, about growing up with these guys is we had, like, I was a quarterback in high school. Jake was my receiver, you know. So we, uh -huh. always, <laughs> uh, and we always played one on one tournaments, you know, like it was, it was good because we had each other to push each other. There was certainly a fair amount of fist fights when, when the ball didn't bounce Jordan's way. He would uh, <laughs> come to blows. Uh, <laughs> I think I think uh, it's it's special because not once once you leave for college, yeah. that, that's 
you spread your wings and fly. But for, for the three of us, we've been living together after college for the last four years, you know? So it's, uh, it's definitely a unique journey and, and just lucky to have you. Yeah. I mean, we grew up upstate New York too. So not really, I mean, big basketball, I guess, we're like an hour and a half north of the city, uh, but not like a sports mecca by any means. Uh, a funny story though, when we, we were playing Little League baseball growing up, we were all baseball guys, and we lost a regular season game. Like we, we had been undefeated maybe five games, six games into the season, and we got home from that game. We were pissed. We were, we were pissed that we lost. Jim made the last out. We struck out. Struck, struck out, out swinging. To, to end the game. <laughs> Typical. Uh, and we got home, and before we even took our cleats off, Jim just like took off down the driveway out into the street to go for a run because he's pissed off that we lost. I had to like punish myself. Yeah, and Jordan and I <laughs> followed for no reason. In our it was like a regular season Little League game. So, and our parents didn't stop us. They were like, yeah, go you losers, go run it out. <laughs> yeah, that was the big thing, BD. Our parents were competitive. But they gave us a ton of, ton of freedom and they supported us and our, our supporting family members too uh, also did the same. All of our aunts and uncles were always at at our game, they're always helping us through school, making sure we're doing the right thing. So we think our supporting cast really, really helped us get to where we are today too. That's amazing. And, you know, like the story and the journey is amazing. Talk about, you know, just working together as bros, as brothers, and, you know, like what are what are your roles, right? And, and, and how do you kind of collaborate? And then also like, how do you, you know, what, are, what, is, what is your focus, you know, as far as the business? Yeah, that's a great question. We get that a lot too. I think early on, there was a lot of bumping heads because, you know, when it's just three people starting a company, you're doing everything. Um, but over time, like any great pair of founders or set of founders, you gotta, gotta put yourselves in a position where it's like, hey, let's just split it up based on our strengths and weaknesses, right? And what we love to do. Um, so naturally over time and, and right now, uh, I, I was the product focused guy. So I love focus on manufacturing, operations, making uh, new products and innovation. Jake naturally is an extrovert with a ton of energy, uh, became the head of sales, and, and Jim, more disciplined, button up, older brother, dealing with investor relationships, legal, uh, helping with HR as well. So um, we kind of played to our strengths, but again, it, it, it took a year or so to figure that out, right? Bumping into our own our own weaknesses. So uh, that's kind of how, how we evolved, and it's worked really well for us. Yeah, and I think that the, the more unique thing about that, too, is we, we certainly played to our strengths when we picked like and siloed ourselves, but it also came with unique challenges that we might not have been good at. And that's where pushing each other and, and having discipline really came into place. Like Jordan being being the brainchild of Super Coffee or the R&D, the innovator guy. In that role, as you grow, you also become a head of production planning and sourcing and all of these different things. Or Jim as a CEO and investor relations like he had to get really good at managing money. Like definitely not a strength for Jim. Yeah. No. Um, so like <laughs> that was where going back to our initial like being brothers and teammates really helped. There being a sales guy like you like to close the deal, but you don't necessarily like to build a sales team and hold people accountable for hitting goals. Um, so I think that's where our strength as brothers and shared values came back to this evolution of our position as well. Yeah, like, absolutely. Wait, so, so like a, you can't have three point guards in the starting five you know if we right. were working on the same shit we'd kill each other so yeah. the fact that our, our personalities lent themselves to different parts of the business is, is the reason why this works absolutely man and then where 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 did you know because there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are watching this right like how you know where did you get your inspiration from from your start like who was the mentor you know what I mean? Or did you seek out mentors or did you guys say, screw it, we're going to do this, sell, this, uh, build this brand ourselves? I'll, I'll take a crack at this one and then Jordan and Jim will add color. But like the way we got started, J Jordan was going to school up at Philadelphia University playing ball up there, he's a point guard. And I was playing football at Georgetown and he was working on a coffee project and he, he called me up and said, hey, do you want to, I, I think that there's something here, you know? And, you want to get started and we both kind of said yeah we both probably more entrepreneurial than Jim but I think that uh Jordan being the youngest brother and, and looking Jim was going into to a traditional workplace and finance so in regards to like a mentor or a support group it was probably the lack of that you know and Jordan being the youngest and it's like taking a shot you know I don't think Jim or I would have would have done that so probably just straight naivety 
uh, and George's naiveness allowed us to take that shot. But then from there, uh, getting mentors involved, Seth Goldman of Honest P was right up the road from us, 15 minutes away from Georgetown where George and I were working on it. And Honest P had gone on to sell the Coca-Cola. They did yep. some incredible things. And we just saw that their value proposition was very similar to ours in that we were saying we wanted to be the, the healthier, less sweet version of the Starbucks Frappuccino in concept. And they kind of did that same thing to Snapple. 15 right. um, so I, I think the start was Jordan really believing in, in himself and the idea, but then building a mentor network is, is what Jim does best, I think. I don't know we got going. Yeah, we used our age to our advantage. You know, being young guys, we would reach out for help and, and mm -hmm. wanted to see us win, you know, and, and it's funny because like today we're sort of competitors with Honest T, but back then Seth didn't see us as such. He was like, look, I want you guys to win. I want you to avoid the mistakes that I made. And, and shit, man, like even in managing people, when we first started hiring folks, like I reached out to my college football coach and said, hey, how do you manage the different personalities on your team? Uh, because it's all clickable, you know, it's the same, it's the same stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'd also just say, you know, the initial, you know, like the dorm room dream, it just came from curiosity, passion, purpose, right? Like all right. the things that fuel the fire. Um, to Jake's point, a lot of naiveness, but um, that just gave me, again, the, the willingness to even, to even start and even say, hey, we can make this a company. But I think just thinking of uh, an opportunity to make something that could have a positive impact on people was really the inspiration from day one that we, we thrived in. That's amazing. That's amazing. And then let's let's talk about like now, you know, you've come up with this idea, you've joined force, you've connected like Voltron, right? <laughs> now you're launching this product. You know, now you're launching this product, you know, um, as you were building it, where did you where did you see that, you know, like, oh, we need we're gonna need help, right? And then where did you see where like hey, we have a, a huge advantage over everyone else. And so, you know, opportunity versus like, how do you like get over a hurdle? You know what I mean? And like, what was your approach uh, to those things? One thing we noticed day one, just how we operated was grocery stores, if you're there where you sell the product, you can take advantage of the situation and make yourself have more space on the shelf and get the mm -hmm. people to know about your story, to know that it started in your little brother's dorm room and they would support you. And I think we knew playing to our strengths that we were high energy guys, that if it came down to a different brand or our brand, we might lose. But if it was a different brand or our brand, we were there in the store, we were gonna win. So right. that's something that we just ran with and our, our team of 85 full-time today and 150 part-time still is that mentality that we're going to work hard and be nice to people and, and try and give ourselves a competitive edge in selling it. I think that's what was naturally easy for us. I'll let these guys talk about where we needed help. Yeah, George, I mean, you, you started this process of, of finding the manufacturer, finding distributors. How did you know what to do? Yeah, I think to that point, like it started with, with product, right? Like you have to right. have differentiated product and purpose too, though, right? You have to have a reason. And we thought that, I mean, I thought that was our strength early on. It was like, we're really passionate and we are going to make a product that's different. Now, how can we kind of scale it to your point? When we right. kind of united and said, we're going, to, we're going to start a company, but you kind of got to put the pieces to the puzzle. To Jake's point, we knew our strategy. We wanted to play to our strengths. Uh, we did surround ourselves with great mentors, uh, but the focus was how can we make a really solid product that's differentiated that we can scale. And then again, surround ourselves with great people um, to make sure we're not running into uh, to any problems. Yeah. yeah. One thing we said in the early days too, though, is that we didn't want to play company. And that was like this idea of playing company, like a lot of, a lot of folks that get started, I think, think about things like, I don't know, I'm supposed to be in investor meetings, wearing a suit and tie, and I'm supposed to do this and that. And one thing we learned in the early days was none of that mattered if we weren't selling bottled coffee through register, you know? Right. Yeah. And we, de and like, while we all would have wished to, to sit in big meetings and, and crunch spreadsheets or whatever like that company thing does or, or run Google AdWords and campaigns and all that. Like if our product wasn't physically on shelves and we weren't waking up making the delivery, then none of that company stuff mattered. And it really wasn't a company. It was more like just going through practice and going through like doing things at a high enough level to stay in business the next day or the next week. And then talk to me about the brand because I love the brand. I love the design. 
you know, uh, walk me through, you know, yeah, there it is. Put, put, put it out. There we go. Uh, we're gonna run. We're gonna run some tickers so people can can go in and, and in the museum of modern art. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no. But walk me through the design because, you know, I know you guys are very particular about you know branding and messaging, and so you know, talk to me a little bit about you know the thought process going into the design. Yeah, so when you, it starts by looking at the competitive set, right? You look at what the competitors are doing and, you know, Starbucks, they have the glass bottle and you see the brown product in there. And, and we realized a lot of other coffees were showing their product. And this, when you look at, when you take a step back and you look at the wall of coffee in a grocery store, it's really dark. So for us, we wanted, right. to, we wanted to stand out. So we, we put it in the white pack and as athletes, we had, we want a uniform, you know, we wanted something that sort of represented power and, and. With that, we put this this stripe, this like subtle, it's like kind of like a sash, you know, if you win a race, somebody put three grapes of sash over you. Uh, so it, it was, it became our our badge of honor, you know, or our, 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 our stamp of approval and it stood out on the shelf. And recently what we learned is the stripe is the most iconic feature of, of the package. And if you look at Jake's hat, it's just a, it's just a bottle without even, without any words on it. And, That's and fine. People start to, start to recognize That's fine. It. I need that. Yeah. I need my hat, bro. I need, I need my hat. Jordan mentioned that we used to fight a lot in the questions. We started the business because um, branding is hard, right? And, and most of it is, is feel. And the larger you get, the more data you can put into it. But it's, it's very subjective. And that's the stuff that we fought about the most in the early days, the subjective stuff. Um, and we didn't arrive at, at this look until really two and a half years ago. We've been in business for almost five years. So there's two and a half years where the product didn't look like this. Um, and ultimately the three of us had a lot of input into what we were making. So we were making a product that looked like something that was meant for a bunch of 24, 25 year old former college athletes. So it looked more like muscle milk than this beautiful premium brand. Uh, and then we went and worked with the branding agency. She kept showing us stuff that we, that we were all over the board on a lot of fights, a lot of fights. Uh, and then she ended up replicating a little Johnny Walker. Okay. And that's Got it. The Super Bowl stripe was born from, um, and then started putting our own twist on it. But that was something that we were like, "Damn, that's right." Um, so branding's hard, man. It takes a long, long time. Yeah. The last, last thing too, just on the name too, Super Coffee, right? Like that was the feedback we were getting. That's the important thing about early on being really close to your customer. Like we we're making deliveries, we we're pouring samples, we we're getting feedback. And we weren't even calling it super coffee at first. We were just trying to explain to people that this was organic coffee with protein and MCT oil and zero sugar. And customers would get a little confused or they wouldn't care that much or they'd kind of lose, uh, lose where you're going with it. So we, we needed to simplify uh, that message and super coffee captured that perfectly. And we were able to elevate that with the, with the brand refresh. Love that. And then talk to me like what's next. I know you guys are expanding the brand, you know, uh, you know, big things are popping for you guys. Uh, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, where you want to see the brand go and, you know, what kind of things are you guys are going to start doing, you know, that we can see in the future. Hell yeah, man. And, and I think for us, when we, when we take a step back and think about what we, what we want to be to the world, it's like we want to mass produce positive energy, you know, and, and for us, that's, that's taking the form of bottled coffee, but, our, our, we got 85 full-time people now. That team's going to continue to grow, and they're just out there sp spreading happiness and kindness, working hard, being nice to people. Uh, and and we really want to be on every shelf where there's an unhealthy option. And right now, the leader is the Starbucks Frappuccino. That thing's got 40 grams of sugar in it. Pepsi, Pepsi. Yeah, it's crazy. So we want to be wherever there's a Frappuccino. We want to be on the shelf next to that, so at least people have a chance. You know, they have a, they have the option to to put the positive energy in their body. Um, George, you want to share a little, some, some sneak peeks on some innovation? Talk yeah, about how we think about expanding the product portfolio to BD is like, we think we've earned the right, and consumers have given us the right, because they love this product. This is one of the best selling bottle coffees in the country now. And consumers are asking for more, go. but consumers are asking for more innovation in, in other categories that we think we've earned the right to play in. So we're launching uh, Super Coffee Pods, so the K-Cups, which I think you've seen are doing extremely well. We uh -huh. Super Creamer which is a, a creamer product that you add to, to hot coffee. Um, so you can add your super creamer to your super coffee pods. There's one of the creamers that you can find. Fire. 
Fire. I have, I have that in the office, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fire. So thinking about different categories, platforms, mm -hmm. which brands still make sense, right? It's true to our purpose of positive energy, lives up to our values. Uh, the market opportunity is clear, and there's a, there's a space for a brand like us in there. Um, and again, it fits our, our culture too, and our team needs to be able to get behind it too. So uh, something we learned actually from uh, the CEO of Microsoft, which I which I always love, but to, to have great innovation, you have the, what he calls the three C's, great concepts, great capabilities, so you gotta be able to scale it, but also great culture. Your team needs to thrive on innovation and our team thrives on innovation. So it allows us to be creative and create all these new products as quickly as we do. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, that, that point is everything. With that mentality and team culture, I think the coolest thing about the brand right now is where it's reaching. Um, we were texting earlier this week about you going to do some content for us uh, with a big display that we got going on in Erewhon right now. Yeah. But we also got big displays going on with the same exact product at Walmart. Uh, yeah. And I think that's very rare. And that's what we want to represent too is like the nutrition facts, the taste, the product that someone at Erewhon is going to be happy about. But just at the end of the day, the taste and the price point that someone at Walmart is also going to pick up and be excited about. Um, so to George's point, continuing to get innovation that not only goes out to the Erewhon's of the world and Whole Foods, but touches the whole brand portfolio and serving those folks at Walmart, Target, CVS, you name it. That's dope. And then uh, I would say kind of, uh, you know, lastly, like um, just from like uh, the branding, the content, like where do we want to see Super Coffee in the future? Right. What is the future of Super Coffee looks like, and what is what are the future, uh, you know, of the Bros? Yeah, man, it's a it's a good question, and the the thing is, it sells really well where it's at, but not a lot of people know about it. You know, I bet people who are tuning into this session for the first time are, are probably seeing Super Coffee for the first time. So I think driving brand awareness, but more importantly, driving trial. And, and you and I, yeah. we talked about getting some influencers involved. You know, really activating our networks. Uh, and I think that's the next step is, is getting some eyeballs on the product because once people try it, the, the repeat purchase rate is super high. Um, yeah. So that's what we got to do is we just got to get product in people's mouths. Yeah, I guess to use an industry phrase, uh, you talk about building a brand, like push and pull. And we've done a really good job of pushing product and I think starting to do some high level marketing and creating um, uh, a digital community, reaching more folks and getting some of that pull coming now over the next few years, getting folks like yourself, your network, um, and I think the cool thing is a lot of that's happening organically. Uh, yep. And now the more touch points you get, the, the, the level can grow. So we're really excited just about where we're headed as a brand. That's dope. And then, you know, obviously there's a lot of entrepreneurs watching this and a, a part of this. So, you know, if we can impart with them, you know, some uh, what, you know, each of one of each one of you, your business inside the game is like, you know, what is that? What, what was that? Excuse me. What was that PG? One of my speakers fell. Uh, yeah. Somebody bumped the DJ boot. Uh, what is that PG mentality? What is that quarterback mentality? What is that receiver? How did, you know, where, where does that business inside the game rely on you? And what would you like to impart to our uh, people watching? Okay. Yeah, man. I, I would start with what, what, what I always say is just work hard and be nice to people. You know, whether you're on the field or in the boardroom, uh, if you're doing those two things, you, you can't be wrong. And, and it, you, can't, you can't have one without the other. If you're, if you're working hard and you're an asshole, we don't want you. And right. if you're nice to people, but you're not working hard, you're no good for us either. So work hard and be nice. Yeah. Uh, funny you mentioned this. I had a conversation with someone earlier this week about business and relating to my position specifically. Mm -hmm. And it came up as a receiver. Uh, and it's a great Chad Ocho Cinco quote. And he said... Uh, they don't pay me for my hands, they pay me for my feet. And as a salesperson, I think that really matters because it's like they don't pay you for the sales pitch, they pay you for the preparation that goes in to go in and execute uh, a sales Absolutely. Pitch. I thought that was one that, that applied to what I do as a salesperson and a receiver. Um, yeah, last thing I'd add for somebody starting out, I would say be really clear about your purpose and your reason for being, because that's going to fuel you no matter, no matter what. Clear about your vision, where you want to take the thing. Clear about your values too, right? The behaviors that are going to guide you, and then also some principles, right? Or some some think about your strategy, right? Your product strategy, distribution strategy. Think about these concepts and things, and have really good answers, and test them with mentors, advisors like BD, 
Um, but I think before you can answer those those questions, you can't you can't really get going. What high number can you point to? I think um, probably values. I think that uh, point guard sets the behavior of the team. PD knows that more than anybody. Point guard's back at all. Point guard's not sharing the ball or playing defense. I don't think anybody else is. Absolutely. And so just to recap, it's values, purpose, putting your feet on the ground, the preparation and the steps, right? Uh, the discipline and the steps, right? And then also when you're doing it, you be of service, you work hard, and you're good to people. Right. And so kind of that's those are great words and great lessons for, you know, all of our people out here and our entrepreneurs. And, you know, one, I love you guys, man. I appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you for coming on to Big Convos. There's so much more that we're going to do. And I'm looking forward to it, man. Let's go, BD. Thank you, brother. Let's get started, bro. It's all love, man. Thank you. And then I, I have to, we have to exit on this song, though. Okay, let's go. We'll see you live next time. <laughs>